Yeah, hello, I'm Retro Jules, and welcome to World of Tanks, and welcome to this new update, which is the Japanese Heavy Tank Line. We're going to get nine new Japanese tanks, one medium, and the rest are heavies. We're also going to get a new map, and we're going to get a new map variant. So let's start with the exciting part, which is the new tanks, what they're going to look like, and just a quick overview of how they're going to be. So at tier 2, we're going to get the Type 89 Medium, the Igo, or the Chiro. It, as always, it's got the Japanese, the good Japanese gun depression, so it does very well on hills, and it's a good trainer for the Type 91 and 95 heavies, which come later on. But it is sluggish, it's very slow, dreadful traverse speed, um, hill climbing is slow, and it's just a bit of a bit of a nightmare tank for speed. Severely lacking armor for a medium, poor penetration on its gun, and it's pretty large for a tier 2 medium tank. At tier 3, we get the Type 91. It's got a very powerful top gun combining good damage, penetration and a decent rate of fire. It has a fairly small turret with good decent gun depression and it's the only tier 3 heavy tank in the game. It's got no armour to speak of though, it's very slow and fairly large and it's got a very weak ammo rack which gets hit and explodes quite often. At tier 4 we have the Type 95. The top gun has acceptable penetration with good alpha damage and a decent rate of fire. The mini turrets and oddly angled armour on the hull can provide lucky bounces if you have the tank angled correctly. But it does have limited gun depression over those mini turrets at the front. It's a tall, fat, large tank and it's a huge target that will easily get spotted. Um, both guns have very slow shell velocities and arcing trajectories on the shells. And just to top it off, it's got very poor mobility with a dreadful top speed. At tier 5, we have the OE Experimental. A brutally high alpha damage, rivaling heavies many tiers higher. It's best in its class and tier. It's got a good reload time for its big gun. It's got a good top speed that is easily reached on flat ground. It's a powerful tank. It's a 100 ton tank that can deal an awful lot of ramming damage because of the speed that it can get up to with that weight. And it also has a very good 10 degrees gun depression. Though it is the largest tank at tier 5, very easy to hit. And the 100mm gun, uh, again, has a very slow shell velocity, along with slow accuracy and a long aim time. At tier 6, we get the OE. It's got a 150mm howitzer, which has good handling, and has better handling and penetration compared to the KV-2. But it's, en it's enormous weight, makes it suitable for ramming. It's got very thick frontal and rear armour with no weak spots and it's got a good view range. It is the widest and overall one of the biggest tanks in the game with a low top speed, very poor mobility, slow reload and aiming time on all the guns, especially the howitzer along with poor accuracy and it's got very thin side armour which offers no protection at all. At tier 7 we have the Oni, it's got very durable tough front and rear armour, a strong turret and great gun depression so it's decent for a, for a hull down situation, really good power to weight ratio which means it's got good acceleration for its size and again good for ramming, but it's the largest tier 7 tank, awful camo value due to its size, low top speed and not a good traverse speed and with the guns they have a mediocre reload accuracy and aiming time so you may be getting the impression that these big heavies 
are big heavies. At tier 8 we have the Oho. Again, very thick frontal armour, but the guns have a very fast reload for their calibres. The 150mm gun reloads 7 seconds faster than the OE. It's got great gun depression over the sides, and the mini turrets on the front are very tough and they are not weak spots. But, because of the mini turrets at the front, limits your gun depression over the front to as little as minus one degree, which is nothing, really. Both guns have poor accuracy, and the tank generally being huge is a very easy target and suffers from poor mobility. At tier 9, we have the Type 4. Absolutely monstrously thick armour for a tier 9. It can bounce tier 10 guns reliably unless they're firing APCR gold ammunition. It's got very high alpha damage for a tier 9 and good penetration values. And it also has great gun depression. But absolutely terrible for mobility. It's the second slowest tank in the game. The first being the, the Old Gang 2, the TOG 2. And it also suffers again from the terrible reload time, accuracy and aim time. And then finally, at tier 10, we get the Type 5. And I've looked online for photos for the Type 4 and the Type 5, and to me they look identical, so I don't actually know how these two tanks are different. I think they're very, very similar. But at tier 10, the Type 5, again, has incredible armour that can withstand most normal ammo. And the sides have spaced armour too. And the Capola is tough. This, this is a mean beastie. It's got the second largest calibre and alpha damage of the tier 10 heavies. It's got the second highest health pool in the game and it's got the best gun depression of all the tier 10 tanks which matches the STB-1 and the new Centurion AX. This is the biggest tier 10 heavy in the game and it's also again got a very weak power to weight ratio with a low top speed. So that's an overall impression of the nine new tanks and we're also going to get a new map, Hilbron, set in Germany, and we're also going to get a map variant which is Corellia in the rain. So that's this update wrapped up for you. These Japanese heavies look like they're going to be real heavy cast iron monsters. I really can't wait to see them, and I hope this update has been some use to you. Keep safe. Keep tanking, and I'll see you soon.